Fort Glenn was the first Alaska Air Base commissioned after the outbreak of war with Japan in 1941. It was built to provide air defenses for the Naval Operating Base and Fort Mears at Dutch Harbor, which was located 65 miles to the east. On June 3rd and 4th, 1942, U.S. Army pursuit planes took off from Fort Glenn to surprise and fight Japanese bombers returning from their attack on Dutch Harbor. In July and August 1942, after the Japanese invasion of Kiska and Attu Islands, U.S. bombers left from Fort Glenn to launch bombing missions over Kiska and Attu. Original plans for Fort Glenn's airfield called for construction of three runways measuring 5,000 feet by 175 feet, support facilities, and quarters for 121 officers and 2,491 enlisted men. Within a year, troop capacity for the air base, garrison, and harbor facilities was increased to 11,982 persons, peaking at approximately 13,000 in April 1943. While the flatness of the terrain was ideal for an airfield, one of the greatest drawbacks affecting all airfields in the Aleutian Islands was the unforgiving wind patterns called Willowaws. Fort Glenn served as a proving ground for early problems of airstrip construction on unstable Aleutian tundra. It is one of eight historic landmarks that commemorate World War II in Alaska. Well, here we are taking off on runway 24 at the Fort Glenn Army Airfield on Unmak Island in the Aleutians. We're going to fly along and climb a bit and then give you a top-down view of this place. Well, we're up over, a little over 3,000 feet, so this is probably a good place to take a look down.
just as an aside, one of my other hobbies is writing and producing music. And a lot of that music I'll use in my videos when we're flying and using the drone camera. And that's the case uh, in this particular video. So I hope you enjoy that. I know I had fun writing it and producing it, even though it was some time ago. So, some other Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 pilot is, is visiting Fort Glenn at the same time I am, and he has parked his Cessna jet. It's a Cessna Citation. I don't know if it's a CJ4 or a Longitude, but anyway, he's got it parked out here. Looks like uh, the lights are still on. Maybe somebody's home. And later on, you'll see there's another one out here, another aircraft out here. That tall peak you see to the right is Mount Vesivadov. It's a stratovolcano and it happens to be about 7,051 feet high and its most recent eruption was caused by an earthquake back in 1957. Another geologic feature on Unmak Island is the volcano of Mount Akamak, and it's characterized by its 5.8 mile wide circular caldera. And just so you know, I took the opportunity to fly down into that caldera, so keep your eyes open for a video of it that I'll be posting shortly. Unmak Island has a subarctic climate. The average uh, high temperature during the year is 43.9 degrees Fahrenheit. The average low temperature is 34.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the average snowfall is 52.8 inches.
Well, I'm up at about uh, a little over 3,000 feet, so I'm going to fly around in circles and descend, and I'll pick you up when I get closer to the ground. Well, we're down to about 1,500 feet now, still descending a little bit, so let's keep looking around. What do you say we land on a different runway? Let's take another bird's eye view of this area.
I'm certainly not 100% sure of it, but those horseshoe looking places could be where they had anti-aircraft guns stationed in order to protect our aircraft on the ground. Since this base closed, a nearby volcano has, has erupted and buried a part of that runway in volcanic ash. And I should mention that we are on Unmak, U-N-M-A-K Island. And since the base closed, there's been a lot of farming uh, going on here and ranching. Of course, I don't know what they do in the wintertime because it's got to be god-awful cold up here. Two things you should know. One, that is not my airplane on the ground. I have no idea what that is. And the second is that there is a paved, there's a paved taxiway between the between the runway on the left and the runway to the right. Take a look when I get back up in the air a little bit. We just blew over some potential places that might have been more gun emplacements, but certainly you can see the farmers have moved in. That looks like a dairy barn. If you notice, behind my aircraft and going up to the top of the frame is a little driveway thing, or I suppose a little taxiway that goes over to another runway. I think we should go over there and take off from that one.
They were in such a hurry to get this airfield up and running that instead of a hard surface, they chose to use a new material called pierced steel planking, which could be laid down quickly over compressed gravel subsurface to provide the airfield with an all-weather capability. They used 18,000 pieces of that matting and had it barged into the island. The first operational unit, the 11th Fighter Squadron, moved into Fort Glenn with P-40 Warhawk fighters on 26 May 1942. Additional construction continued throughout 1942 with four 5,000 foot by 175 foot runways completed. They were runways 0624, 0735, and there were another two, 0321 and 0422, which were situated only 10 degrees apart. All runways had four layers of asphalt laid down over the PSP. And that was my obligatory, thank you, but I'm in a bush plane, I don't need a paved runway landing. Or you could say, maybe I landed short. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm leaving again. No. That was almost a disaster. As I fly off into the sunset, I'll say thank you very much for coming along with me on our visit to Fort Glenn Army Air Base. Stay tuned for visits to other abandoned airfields in the future. And thanks again. <laughs>